What, what do y'all remember about uh, the Foley Baymanet Armistice Day game? Any memories of, of that? That was always a pretty big deal, wasn't it? Oh, that was a big deal to me. I mean, you could go to the parade yeah. and yeah. Yeah. see all the bands and yeah. meet all the people, you know. If Baymanet people would come down at Foley, they just mingled with everybody. If it was in Baymanet, we went up there. But when they stopped it, you know, that was, to me, that was, I don't know why they stopped it. Maybe they had some Larry knows, but. Because uh, I think your single year was the first time they didn't play as part of the, yeah. the Armistice Day thing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I remember when we went to Bay Manette that year, they were favored over us by two or three touchdowns. And they had one guy that returned punts. He was good. And Coach Meredith told us, he said, y'all go down, don't let that guy run a punt bag. And you know, he got one punt returning that night for about eight or ten yards, and we upset him six to nothing. And they, they just knew, hey, they're going to walk all over us, but we surprised them. Well, let me tell you something now. <clears throat> and, of course, James will know this better than anybody, but we didn't have nobody who could kick an extra point. <laughs> and he would drop kick the ball, drop the ball and kick the ball. Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember that. That was, and that went on for about the whole year. Yeah, they let me do but it. We didn't, once when we finally got good enough to score a touchdown, we couldn't get a, kick an extra point. Nobody could kick one, and and he could do good at uh, uh, drop kicking it. So that's the way they did it. Where'd you Where'd you pick that up? The drop kicking. Just. I watched it. I I read an article on somebody. I forget who it was, played college ball, and he, he would drop kick. And I thought, well, hey, I'm going to try that. And doggone, I, I, didn't, I wasn't really good at it, but I could make it. He was a lot better it. than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just picked it up and just kept practicing, you know. And, you know, they say practice makes good, but I don't know about good. But I enjoyed trying it, and Coach Meredith would let me do it. But, was it you know, just we extra played, points? Back then when extra we, points. Yeah, mm -hmm. Right. When we played football, was getting home. Yeah. You had to hitchhike. Yeah. And of course, I lived in Montsecure, and that was quite a way. Yeah. And uh, people down at Fort Morgan, they had to hitchhike too. So it was a bloody all had to sacrifice to just play. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Gosh, Keith, when when I lived about four miles south of Foley, then after my dad died. We moved too fully, but I can remember we had always asked Coach uh, Meredith, let us off at about five to six, because we had two or three people that worked at stores in Foley, and they were going south. And if we could get off in time, we'd catch a ride. If we didn't catch a ride, we'd have to walk three or four miles. You know, I mean, or hitchhike. And, yeah, and we just tried to. Coach him a little, let us off a little early, you know, and get start early and get off a little early. But it didn't work out every time. But it just you, you might see only three or four cars going south on any given day. I mean, it just right. no traffic. Right. They only came to Foley on Saturdays to buy groceries, and farmers would talk about what the problems they had and get ideas from everybody. And about three or four o'clock, it pack up and go home. But there wasn't a lot of people in Boscure that had automobiles, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but they were uh, putting up, paving the road from 59 all the way to across the Boscure River there. I guess it's 65 that comes in. They were okay. paving the road there. So when we catch a ride down that far, there wasn't any traffic going that way because they, they, they had stopped it. They, Made them detour, so we had to walk that distance. I never forget the night that, going back to that um, Milton game. Uh, no, it was the year before. Aver Keith Avenger was a center, and uh, he had an old A model or something. I don't know what it was, and we used to pile in that thing and ride all over Foley. But he had the top cut out, and the night that it started raining and the uh, Milton game, the cheerleaders, of course you know girls, they don't want their hair to get wet and everything else. So they said, hey, there's the 
Avenger's uh, car. Let's get in in. They were piled in there. And they didn't know it didn't have a top on it. <laughs> and they got soaking wet before they got out of there. <laughs> uh, you, did you interview, uh, or you talked to Pete Reichel? Yes, we uh, interviewed him last summer. Did, did he tell you about the Admore game at Foley? Y'all tell me about it. Well, I don't know what year, what was it, map 40, 48. 48. They came to Foley and they had, I think they had won 49 games in a row. It was, I don't know, two or three seasons, three, three or four seasons they were undefeated. And they were favored over Foley by I don't know how many points. And it kept on. The first quarter was nothing to nothing. Second quarter, nothing to nothing. Third quarter, nothing to nothing. Then they fully mounted a drive. Pete was the main pass runner and everything. And they scored and beat them seven to nothing. Now you're talking about some sick people from Atmore. Oh, they, you Did didn't you beat know Atmore Kenny back Hand? in the 40s. You just tried to hold the score down. Did you know Kenny Hand? I know that, I know that name. He was, he was a big part of that victory. Yeah, big part of it. Yeah. What do you remember about him in that ball game? Any specific he, members? He was playing guard, and he made a, an enormous amount of tackles. Uh, I, you know, I don't know how he did it or anything about that, I, but uh, I remember him, uh, him uh, making a lot of tackles. But my brother was on the team the year before and they went up there, and they had a good team. But Atmore beat the daylights out of them. And I remember that uh, he played end, and they called his name quite a bit of time because he was making tackles. And so I asked him later on, I said, uh, how were you able to make those tackles? Well, Jack Moore played right next to him. And he said, the only way I can make those tackles, Jack Moore took all the interference out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but they had a couple of backs up there. Carl and Charles Madison was really, really good. Yeah, they was. No, Carl they Madison were. was a great coach for a long time. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Right yeah. over yeah. Pensacola. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about